What's up guys? Welcome to something brand new that we're going to give us a try. We're going to call this the OMFL Instant Classic Game of the Week. Games of the Week are so hard to do because the really good games get played so quickly after advance. It's really impossible to keep up. And then we end up defaulting to the same four to five teams that are on these recaps every single week. So I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Instead of trying to keep pace with all of you, we're going to do a rewind every week. So as soon as we advance, I'll take a look at the games that were played. We'll pick an instant classic game of the week that week. We'll recap it. And then hopefully, if those games are good enough, we'll push you guys to submit an instant classic game. And hopefully it'll be something that goes on our instant classic game thread that we have. Where you can go back and watch the last three years worth of instant classic games that were submitted. Remember though, you also get extra bonus points for any instant classic game that is submitted and approved as an instant classic game and gets put on the thread. So we are going to take a look back at week eight. We're sitting in week nine. There are lots of good games to possibly choose from. I looked at the Patriots and, and, and the Bills. That was an offensive explosion in that game. Two powerhouses really going at it. We looked at the Giants and the Saints who played to a really close one. We also went and looked at the Falcons and Cowboys. But honestly, talk about those Falcons a whole lot. I was trying to pick somebody new. The other games were also very, very good. This week, we're going to go with the Buccaneers and the pa Panthers. The reason I went with this game is it was a... Game in the NFC South that was very much needed for the Buccaneers to keep pace with the Atlanta Falcons. And those Panthers are actually playing much better as of late. And they're trying to keep pace. And this would be a good game for the Panthers to try to steal at home against probably a better Buccaneers team. The Buccaneers come out on top 20-17. to Jameis Winston really had a great game. Actually, let's go backwards and look at a couple of stats here. You'll see that both of these teams played really good defense. They only allowed a little over 250 yards for the Panthers, and the uh, the Buccaneers allowed, I'm sorry, the, Pan the Buccaneers allowed a little over 250 passing. The, the Panthers allowed a little over 220 passing. Both teams allowed under 65 yards rushing. Uh, the Panthers got after the quarterback with three sacks in that game. It really, though, was going to be about the turnovers and the takeaways. The Buccaneers had three takeaways. The Panthers only had one. And that ended up being the difference in a very tightly contested game. Even though both of these defenses played really well, if you look at the third down percentage, both allowed a lot of third down completions. 64% for the Buccaneers. 57% for the Panthers. Now let's go back and look at some stats during this game. Jameis Winston played outstanding. 18 of 27, 243 yards and two touchdowns. So not that 300-yard-plus game, but very efficient with 18 of 27 and the two touchdowns. Wentz tried to keep pace. He was 14 of 21, which isn't too, too bad. He threw two touchdowns, but the three interceptions is what ended up hurting him in this game. Again, both teams struggle trying to find a rushing attack. 13 rushes for Morrison for 60 yards. 16 for 26 yards for Blake. 3 for 15 for Foot, And 2 for 24 for Britain. So Britain really had that long of 19, which helped those Buccaneer numbers. But outside of that, they really struggled to find any kind of rushing attack. Harrison for the Panthers had a great game. Three receptions, 100 and 32 yards, along with 58, with that being a touchdown. Over on the Buccaneers, they were kind of spread at the ball around. Fitzgerald had 6 for 76. Evans had 5 for 86. He's really the big play guy for them. He seems to catch everything. He had a touchdown and a long of 25. But it really ended up being all about the defense in this game. Now, let's take a look, though, at the punters. Feely had two for 60. He averaged 60, I should say. He had a long of 62 and one inside of 20. Redfern did his best to keep pace. He had one punt, 38 yards, but he was inside of the 20. So he, both teams were pinning people deep. Feely really getting a, a rocket leg out there. Kenneco for the Buccaneers had three field goals. Agnew only one for the Panthers. And then if you look at the defense, you'll see where a lot of these picks came from. Hartgraves, the third, had an interception. And then Jenkins had two. Jordan, Cam Jordan coming over from the Saints, had a sack and two tackles. 
The Panthers did a much better job getting after the quarterback. Nimchik got one. Beasley Jr. had one. Woodson had one. And then Hunter also had a forced fumble, which gave the only turnover that the Panthers were able to get their hands on. So at the end of the day, this really came down to Winston playing more consistently better play and protecting the ball better than Wentz did at the end of the day. You'd like to see both of these teams get some running game going, but both played in a nice NFC South battle. All about the defense here. Wentz, if he was able to protect that ball better, maybe the Panthers get away with the win. Both teams' defense let you down on third down, giving up a lot of first down plays. That kept the punters out of the game, but when the punters did come in, they did their job. So, some back and forth here, some confusing stats with a really great defense, not allowing a lot of rushing or passing yards, but giving up big plays on third down. The Buccaneers take away a 20-17 victory against the Panthers, and they stay at 6-1. and one. They stay in pace for that NFC South. The Panthers are not out of it yet, though. Still very much in it for a wild card. I really like that Panthers team. Just depends on if he can stay out of his own head and really continue to put it together, but NFC, you've been warned. The Buccaneers are for real. Thank you for tuning in for this week's OMFL Instant Classic Game of the Week for week number eight. We'll see you after week number nine advances. I know there's going to be some great games to take a look at. Make sure that you do hashtag or uh, exclamation mark, I should say, PPL to check out the latest Press Pass Live that will be out a little later today. Lots of good stuff. Keep that content coming. Submit those instant classic games if you feel that you've had one that it gets approved and not only goes into our record books, but you get a little incentive point there to help you with the incentive plan at the end of the season. Thanks for tuning in to this week's OMFL Instant Classic Game of the Week. See you next week. Peace. Hey.